Hello and a warm welcome everyone for joining this session. We have uh, Shakti Kanan today with us to share his experience, the title of the talk, in Fast and Curious Benchmarking Multicore OCaml. So without any further delay, over to you, Shakti. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so this session is uh, on benchmarking uh, Multicore OCaml and their experiences uh, with the same. Uh, my name is Shakti Kanan. Um, so when I actually um, submitted this presentation at Functional Conf. We were part of SecPol Systems, uh, based out of uh, IIT Madras. Um, and uh, this is a continuation of uh, the work done by my colleague, uh, Tom Kelly, uh, from the University of Cambridge in the UK. And now uh, all of our uh, OCaml Labs, SecPol Systems have been merged with uh, the company Caridus, uh, which is based in uh, Paris in France. Uh, this is my email address and my uh, social media handle. So the outline of this talk, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what is the OCaml benchmarking suite that we have called Sandmark. And then um, I'm going to talk about the, the real motivation uh, and the reason that we've been working on this for the last few years. Uh, some results uh, to share with you and also some solutions uh, in the interest of time uh, that uh, you know uh, that we have found useful and also some key takeaways uh, from the session so what is sandmark sandmark is um, the ocaml benchmarking suite uh, which is available as uh, free labor and open source software uh, it's available on github it has uh, both uh, sequential as well as uh, parallel benchmarks and uh, if you just look at the top level directory of Sandmark, we have uh, a number of uh, folders there uh, from the benchmarks folder, which actually contains the OCaml benchmark code. Then we have the uh, dependencies uh, that are required to build these benchmarks. They are again uh, OCaml packages. And then we have uh, the notebooks folder, which contains some of the Jupyter notebooks, which are used to analyze the uh, results from the benchmark runs. And the OCaml versions folder has some of the OCaml variants, uh, the branches that we want to run uh, and test with. And there are some configuration JSON files and some uh, bash scripts. So the, the source URL for the Sandmark repository is uh, at github.com slash uh, OCaml hyphen bench slash Sandmark. So, what we basically do here is we take the, the OCaml compiler. So the stock OCaml compiler is at uh, github.com slash OCaml slash OCaml. And um, we basically build that compiler. And then we use the build compiler to compile these benchmarks. And we run them and we measure some metrics. Right? That's pretty straightforward. Uh, so what, what could possibly go wrong with this? Right? What are the challenges that uh, we currently face? Uh, so, until January 2022, uh, OCaml, uh, the main stock OCaml or trunk OCaml, uh, had mostly sequential uh, execution, and uh, the, the parallel multi-core version was being implemented. And in January this year, we have merged the uh, parallel and concurrency implementation with the stock OCaml. Okay, so that was a big. Uh, uh, milestone of, of a lot of hard work over the years. Uh, it was a very big PR um, and we expect to have a 5.0 release of OCaml in, uh, in sometime June uh, this year, right? But from running sequential benchmarks to parallel benchmarks, there has been a lot of changes that have happened. The, the language has evolved and there have been different variants of OCaml compiler that have been developed. Right. So, for example, here, if you see this is a 412O stock, which represents the, the core OCaml development, then you have a, a 412O domains, which basically represents the implementation of parallelism when using OCaml. And there's an apex syntax, which some of the academicians actually like to use. So, the language is evolving. So, it becomes a moving target for us to actually benchmark this. So that's a challenge in itself. Uh, the Dune is the tool that we use to build the OCaml packages and the projects similar to how you have Cabal in Haskell. 
And so when this language changes, sometimes even the, the Dune build tool will fail to compile. Um, so there are ways to mitigate that. We use a previous version of Dune to you know, run and uh, build the benchmarks. So this is one hack that uh, we have currently. But those are some things that you, you have to keep uh, in note of. And for each of these benchmarks, there are a large number of dependency packages themselves. Um, uh, we used to have about 50 to 60 packages. And every time you want to update to a new version of OCaml variant, you have to also make sure that these dependency packages also build along with them. So that is a, a challenge in itself. Of course, the uh, classification of benchmark runtimes, uh, some run in less than one second, varies from one second to 100 seconds. Uh, some benchmarks you want to run uh, on the CI, the continuous integration pipeline. Uh, some benchmarks like the, the Ermin data store. Uh, Ermin is um, it's like a, it's a Git-based store uh, in OCaml. Um, so those are like database tests we want to run for like two, three days continuously. So those are longer we test. So how do you classify uh, the benchmark runs uh, based on runtime? So those are things that uh, are, uh, very important when we actually do benchmarking for OCaml. So this paper, uh, retrofitting parallelism to OCaml, is what I, I, I talked about initially, where we have merged uh, the, the OCaml team has merged the uh, parallelism and concurrency implementation with the stock OCaml. Um, and this paper is uh, fully available. You can uh, download it uh, online. And this is the uh, speed up graphs for some of the benchmarks. Um, it's very similar to what uh, we saw in the universal scalability law that uh, uh, Brooklyn mentioned the uh, day before yesterday in her talk. So right now, if you take OCaml, uh, stock OCaml, you have parallelism and concurrency implemented. You can actually write programs for those. So we use these uh, Sandmark benchmarks uh, to review some of the OCaml PRs and changes uh, that happen in the compiler itself. So this is an example of uh, a bytecode regression that we caught recently. So bytecode is basically the, the OCaml interpreter, uh, basically the REPL that you use, where you can key in OCaml code, uh, and then you can uh, see the output immediately. So there was uh, this uh, camel ensure stack capacity function that uh, is called very frequently and we're able to uh, detect with this sandmark benchmarks uh, that there's a slowdown in the performance and this got uh, fixed as well. So it's quite useful uh, when you want to track down uh, compiler PR changes for performance regressions. Uh, another example is the, um, the runtime tracing. Uh, so this is uh, an ongoing PR where uh, we want to have uh, instrumentation and tracing uh, from the, the runs. And uh, here there is not much regression. So the main idea is if you take a sequential program and you run it on the parallel runtime as well, of course, with multiple CPU cores, you should have scalability, but there should not be much difference between the sequential runs uh, in the parallel runtime as well. Right? So it won't reduce the number of uh, deviations between the two runs. So here we didn't see much uh, uh, deviation here and the uh, PR is actually being reviewed currently. So how do we do this? Uh, we have a lot of benchmarks and uh, we have different run times that we want to select from. And uh, we have different configuration files uh, on different hardware. So we use JQ and we use a tag system where you can pick the benchmarks that you want to run based on the tags for a specific configuration. Okay. So that's the, that's the three different dimensions that uh, we have uh, by which we can actually select the benchmarks that you want to execute on a specific machine. I'm not going to go into the details um, of these in the interest of time, but uh, I'm happy to uh, follow up with the uh, Hangout session if you want to learn more about these. So from 
the configuration perspective, we work closely with the compiler developers and what is it that they primarily need, right? So we need a way to, to specify the developer branch that we want to track. Um, there might be some configuration options that they want to use when they actually build their compiler variant. Um, when you're executing the compiler, you might want to pass specific options. Uh, maybe there's some environment settings that you want to use. So we want to provide these options to the compiler developers when they want to actually run some of these benchmark runs and uh, we have support for all of these. So here's one example where um, one of the developers wanted to uh, see the impact of changing the minor heap size. Uh, and we're able to do that by changing the uh, environment parameters. Of course, you can measure things uh, using like Linux performance tools like perf uh, and so on. Um, but I will come to the metrics section uh, shortly. Yeah. So we're not targeting all the metrics. Um, the, the main idea is to see what the compiler developers actually need. So the, the GC statistics is something that they are very interested in. Uh, this is one example uh, where we implemented a code size feature uh, for the F Lambda OCaml variant. So F Lambda uh, variant has a lot of optimization passes that it does. And um, they want to see the number of uh, camel symbols in the final code. And for some of the benchmarks, uh, we have some uh, counts here. So this is a feature that we actually added as part of the uh, metrics, which is uh, basically uh, the execution of the benchmark run uh, comes out as a JSON dump, uh, which we can use for analysis. So the key point here is you can have like thousand metrics, but then what we really care is what are the metrics that are very relevant to the compiler developers. And that's what we need to focus on. So, we have quite a few machines um, that we use, uh, some important uh, configuration settings that you should be aware of. So of course this work uh, builds on the initial work uh, by Tom Kelly who presented uh, in ICFP 2019, uh, the International Conference on Functional Programming, where he done some initial benchmark experiments. Uh, there's a link to the uh, detailed notes in the reference section. But I'll briefly mention here that uh, some things that we did was we disabled the hyperthread. Uh, we didn't want to have any uh, crossover or um, resource sharing the CPU. Uh, Turbo Boost was also disabled. Uh, we didn't want to have any throttling from external factors. Linux CPU isolation is done using ISOL CPUs. Uh, we passed that in the kernel boot configuration. Uh, so. Here is an example of uh, uh, the Navajo server. So this is about 128 cores, and this is a benchmark run that uh, basically runs for 64 cores. And so here we basically isolate the CPUs one to four, right, for the OS itself. So all the interrupts handling for the OS should only go into that particular CPU. It should not affect the CPUs that are actually running the uh, benchmark. Uh, ASLR is also, uh, disable because we want to have uh, repeatable experiments. Um, and of course, power state is also uh, disabled. Uh, we don't want to go into power state mode and actually running the benchmarks. So, these are two configurations of systems we have um, that are currently running these uh, benchmarks on a nightly basis. So, one is the Turing machine, uh, which is a 28 core machine, and the Navajo, which is an AMD one with uh, 128 cores. Uh, NUMA is non-uniform memory access. Uh, a lot of the hardware these days come with uh, this NUMA configuration, uh, which we still let it to experiment with, with something to consider. So we do have uh, benchmarking as a service for the compiler developers. Um, so where they can actually select uh, the number of uh, variants that they want to compare with across these two machines. And then we have those uh, time uh, collections count and so on that uh, are shown in the uh, web interface. The URL is uh, sandmark.okamalabs.io. So you can actually open that uh, website and actually uh, see the, the nightly run results. 
uh, for these uh, branches. So the Sandmark nightly config uh, basically provides three types of entries for the compiler developers. One is they can specify a branch. Um, the other option is to specify uh, a branch commit. So you want to track all the changes on a specific branch from that commit. And of course, we have an expiry field. So uh, let's say you want to work on this particular feature for like for two weeks, and you only want to see the results for those two weeks, then you can have an expiry uh, field entry. And uh, the nightly runs will stop running the benchmarks uh, after that date. And you can also specify a specific uh, pull request. So if you have something that uh, you want to analyze and see if there's any regressions happening for your pull request, uh, then you can uh, explicitly specify that in the new order. So the current Sandmark nightly config is there uh, in GitHub. So that's where uh, developers can create a PR and then the machines will pick it up in the night and it will do the benchmarks for them. We also experimented with Docker. Um, current bench is a OCaml pipeline, which allows us to uh, create custom builds. And uh, we found uh, between Docker versus native uh, builds uh, to be very close. We didn't find much difference. Um, of course, with all the, with all the tuning settings that uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, we were able to actually run Sandmark inside Docker with the current bench pipeline. It's something we plan to expand uh, in the future as well. Yeah, so the key takeaways um, from this talk, uh, I would say when you're doing benchmarking, try to keep uh, minimal package dependencies as much as possible. Um, if you have some patches that you are building uh, with specific OCaml or compiler variants, it's good to push those changes upstream so that the uh, respective package maintainers can actually uh, manage that for you. The nightly runs are very, very useful as we have seen. We are able to detect uh, a few regressions um, in most of the PRs that we had. And yeah, it's important to work closely with the compiler developers to see uh, what metrics they really need and only focus on that rather than trying to create, create a large plethora uh, uh, of metrics and uh, which have no relevance. So it has to be very really focused on what they're trying to measure and what they want to analyze. Uh, build failures will happen a lot. Uh, the language is evolving and uh, that's something that uh, you need to embrace. The UI that we currently have for the Sandmark nightly config is very minimal. So we only have like few entries, mandatory entries that uh, you can use. But the tooling as such has a lot of uh, options available. So when somebody is really starting to use the UI, it's good to just have uh, a very uh, minimal configuration to start with. And always tune the hardware uh, to measure, uh, especially for the parallel benchmark runs. For the report analysis, we initially started with Jupyter Notebooks, which are still there today in the repository. We find that uh, very useful. If you want to create new graphs, uh, you want to test some things out, and then once you're satisfied with the analysis, you can move up to the web interface. Uh, a lot of references here, uh, Sandmark, the nightly repo and the nightly config. Uh, we do publish um, monthly reports on the multiple or family work, uh, which are available. The paper references, and of course the uh, current bench that uses the Docker for its pipeline. Uh, we are hiring as well. So if you're interested uh, to work with OCaml, um, we have quite a number of positions. Uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us. And that ends my talk. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shakti, for the wonderful talk and sharing your experiences in the various metrics involved in building the benchmarking framework in OCaml.